Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. I'm Sarah Richardson. For the past six months, I've ushered this small town heritage home out of a faded past into its glorious future. Oh, good one. Are you sure this is the right size? La, 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 la. I can't hear you. In one rollicking blitz of a reno. That's the shake of doom. Right now, it's terrible. The only way is that, baby. I think it's about to happen. You're so smart. As we go off the grid again. Get it finished. Just a couple hours north of the city, the small town of Creemore has it all, but there are very few places to stay. So I wanted to remedy that by transforming this rundown Victorian into an all-season vacation rental. Whoa, look at that. Isn't it cute? It's super cute. I snapped this house up for $350,000. I still think we got an amazing deal, and I know that together we can make it awesome. It was the right price, but the wrong size. The key to a luxury vacation rental home is that it needs enough bedrooms and living space to attract families and groups of friends. I started with a goal of completing it in six months and spending $400,000 to add a two-story addition to double the square footage. Ooh, I feel like I'm in, a, in an old antique store. Oh, my God. That said, I've done my fair share of renovations, so I've learned that they usually take longer and cost a lot more money than you planned at the outset. And this one's been no different. <gasps> Very very wet. Definitely going to need roof repair. So we're calling about the floors. There isn't uh, enough no. flooring anywhere to, to patch. Okay, so it's I buy an old floor. It cost way more due to some big expensive surprises, and it took a bit longer as a result. Welcome to the money pit, people. For a project like this, I need my A team. My husband Alex and our daughters Robin and Fiona are investing a lot of sweat equity. Wow, look at all that. Our general contractor, Ed, has been here since we got the keys. What happens next, Ed? What happens next? Well, we want to put all the second floor joists up today. And of course, my right-hand man and day husband, Tommy, has been my partner in this grime every step of the way. Seems like we're in this together. Now, this 1,000-square-foot Victorian home that was once made up of tiny, separate rooms has transformed into 2,500 square feet of contemporary open space that sleeps eight. When we bought this house, it was buy one, get one free. There's a barn at the rear of the property that was built just over 100 years ago. It's a bit run down, but still structurally sound. It's like, huge. When, when in town do you get a barn on the property? I am not going to be the person to tear this barn down. I think it's amazing space. It's bonus space. We have a house that's not huge and a barn that is original and authentic and awesome. But it's also in need of a fix up. Now you're talking. Months ago, Tommy and I came up with a plan. Wow, this is really authentic. Like, there were some animals chewing on that little area there. Right? And then in here, OK, well, this is pretty great. This is big. Is this going to be the garage? I don't know. Couldn't you make it a cool summer living dining pavilion? I don't know. Oh, maybe. I like, make it into like a dining, drinking, lounging, hanging. It's a playhouse, maybe for adults. To give my rental guests even more spaces to spread out and enjoy, on the main floor of the barn, I'll retrofit the stables to fashion a bar and serving area. And next to that, I'll have a large table for al fresco dining. On the upper level, I'll lay new floors and open up the space with windows to bring in the breeze and loads of natural light. I'll use practical indoor-outdoor furniture and a simple color palette to create a playhouse atmosphere where adults and kids alike can escape and unwind in rain or shine. Most importantly, this is the bonus feature of this property and will take my rental listing from country charming to over-the-top hotspot. First things first, I launched Operation Cleanout. I got the whole gang on board to do a gut job on the barn. Since my goal for this project is to be a lean green designing machine, 
I recycled a few items. These get recycled? I think so. Salvaged some old gems. Well, here's my dining table. And Ed took the rest. Now that we've gone out with the old, I'm meeting with Charlotte and Ed to see how we can usher in the new. We can't afford to just say, oh, money's no object. Money is always an object. I basically look at this barn as gift with purchase, and I think it's a really neat space, but we're spending all our money on the house. We still have all the landscaping to do, the porch to rebuild, decks, planting, sod, driveway, everything else. So the list of to-dos is long, but I feel like we have to do something in here. We definitely need to get a beam in mid-span on these floor joists. Yeah. And that header over that door, I don't know Sagging if I would lot. trust that big split in it right now. What can we do to fix this floor, Ed? You reuse these boards? Yeah, we could. We could pressure wash these boards all off and relay them again. It would look great. The floor isn't the only thing I'll try to salvage. So we found this door upstairs, so we can turn this into a dining table. Nice. Very nice. And then I was thinking, this is the original screen door. What if we cut it off here, ripped out the screen, and then we could turn it into a nice mirror? We could mount it outside. I know. Uh, There's something with mirrors. You're not supposed to have any reflection out. And not I, I think that's a load of feng shui. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing is we have my whoopsie, I made a mistake See on this window. Every renovation has a few missteps. And one of the first ones on this project was this custom window I ordered. When it arrived, it just didn't work. I can't see anything. The barn is gone. Custom windows can't be returned, so I stuck this albatross in the barn. Now I'm hoping to find a new home for it here. Come, let's go upstairs and figure out where we can put this. OK. The upper level is hot and dark, so that window will transform this space. Reusing material makes sense and saves sense. At this stage of my reno, every penny counts. So we're just going to cut a big hole in this wall to fit that window. OK. Slip the window in, add a few corner braces to keep the wall from shaking. Nice. And then we saved all this rough barn stuff. I can put some corner braces in with some of these pieces. They'll look like they've always been there. What would you do here? So if we got this floor leveled up and tightened all these boards up, we could cover it with plywood. It's easy to sweep, it's easy to clean, and you're still going to see the, the boards from below. Most importantly... All this dirt doesn't keep falling in your glass of wine when you're having that dinner party Friday night. Right. Sounds like Friday night can't come soon enough. You know what they say, when one window closes, another one opens. Hey, how are you doing? Three. Even if it used to be a wall. Sometimes good design really is a breeze. A few months ago, Alex and I purchased a modest heritage home, and we're transforming it into a luxury vacation rental. You got the eye, lady. You should do this for a living, you know? You think? We've gone to town on the interior of the house. So what's left? We're getting so close to the end that it's finally the turn for the barn. I love barns. I love old barns. Who doesn't love a barn? We're turning this one into a one-of-a-kind clubhouse for kids and adults to take this rental over the top. Back in the city, I start searching for furniture. With a space this rustic, we need to choose carefully. Too new will stand out. Anything too fancy just won't fit in. But we don't want it to be too themey either. Full of restraint, Tommy and I hit the vintage shops. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look who I found. What about these things, Sarah? They're vintage saddle horses. Oh, that's cool. There's so many things about them that are cool. The numbers, the patina. You could use these as a table place. <gasps> these would be great as legs for the door I want to use as the tabletop. When you make a base like this, you need to know that these two aren't going to move. Because if these move at all, when somebody cuts, the whole table goes. Right. Now, these are totally sturdy. Every design scheme needs an accent color. And nothing suits a barn better than red. Creating my own table with my salvage door and these saddle horses will give it one-of-a-kind charm, and it'll fit beautifully with the rest of the barn. While we've got the barn on the brain, my colleague Natalie and I scour the local shops in search of charming barn decor. We're keeping our eyes peeled for accents in rich red tones. Oh, yeah, that's got rustic charm. I love uh -huh. these old flower sacks. They're great. Milk paint. 
What about that door that we love and can't find a home for it? Ooh! Well, DIY. Well, what if we painted it and then we, we could hang it as art? Yes, I like this red. The barn isn't the only thing that needs a refresh. The exterior of the house will be the first thing people see. And I want to give my renters a fabulous first impression with curb appeal. To maintain some of the original Victorian charm, I'll restore the front porch, keeping all of its original woodwork intact. This door in the addition is now the main entrance, so I'll add a covered porch for practicality and street presence. In the backyard, I'll create a basic platform deck where guests can enjoy the fresh greenery and take in the view of the barn. With that plan in place, Ed and I discuss an affordable yet durable option to upgrade the exterior of the house. Traditionally, Victorian homes were painted with lighter colors on the woodwork and trim, but I've chosen to go with a dark slate gray that gives this house a contemporary look and will make it stand out in our rental listing. These wood sills, they're not in bad shape, but we have a few options. We can take these out, install new concrete sills, which would last forever, or we could strip them and repaint them, which would need painted every year. But by the time we strip this, sand it, prep it, prime it, paint it, paint it again, to me, it's a maintenance issue, because we can strip all this off and put product on here that it's supposed to last for years, but it never does. Or we can wrap them in aluminum as we would all the old brick mold. We bend this all up nice to fit over this sill. It's a really it's nice job. It's crisp, it's nice. The match to the windows is perfect. This starts looking like a pretty good option. This will last forever. Cap them. These upgrades will serve me well for years to come. Want to know what else will serve me well down the line? Solar power. While we're still tied to the grid, we're not solely dependent on it. The panels generate energy that can be used when it's produced, and the excess is stored in the batteries. If we need more energy than what's coming out of those panels, the battery supplies it. When there's not enough sunshine, the system buys energy from the grid when it's at the cheapest rate. Finally, if the sun's shining on the panels and no energy is being consumed, once those batteries are fully topped up, the excess is sold back to the grid, and that's literally winding the meter back. We spent $20,000 on our solar package, which will reduce our energy bills significantly. We can have this system paid off in about five to seven years, all while being good to our planet. So right now we're looking at the system that we've installed online. So this is kind of like looking at your data plan, but for power, so you can see how much you're using, how much you're saving. And, but the best part is that with the solar and the batteries, unlike your data plan, you can actually work the hydro bill down. Well, that's exactly it. How much power we're consuming, how much we're producing. So right now, what this is telling us is that we are using zero energy from the grid, mm -hmm. and the battery system is providing 400 watts to power everything that's on in the house. At 7 o'clock this morning, we were consuming power at the same rate as we were buying power. At around 8.30, that's when the system went active, and you can see there's a hard line where we stopped buying power from the grid. And what I really like is at 9 o'clock, there's no red bar at all. So we're running completely on the power systems in the house, and that's just the battery. I'm gonna grab a vacuum cleaner or something like that, okay. plug it in, and we'll see it happen here. Okay, so okay. right now we're drawing 400 watts. Let's see how high we can crank it. All right, let me plug this thing in. And... Yeah, look at that, 0.8 kilowatts. That's pretty cool. I love the fact that that's real time. That's super neat. Since this is a rental property, we can actually see how our renters may be consuming power and adjust it to meet their needs a little bit better. Absolutely. Cool. And the sunny, happy vibes just keep on coming. This is like the nicest day of the entire year, isn't it? Beautiful out here. We're adding two outdoor features to our exterior, a back deck and a porch at the new front door. I reoriented the entire house to make the entry into the addition the primary entrance. Ed and I meet to review the plans. Some nice posts and a gable to support a roof that keeps the snow from falling on your head. Exactly. The rain. I think that's perfect. But it's easier said than done. When you're renovating an older home, new additions have to meet the current building code. And if you think standards have changed, you'd be right. So the original house porch is sitting on one cement block. To build this porch, we're going to have to go down nine I know. feet. I know. That's been there. A tale years. of then and now. OK. 
By enlisting the free services of my Minister of Exteriors, I'll save about $1,000 in labor. Now that's a whole new kind of money pit. After a hundred years of gravity, this barn could use a little pick-me-up. This floor has a huge sag in it. Well, this is a little beam actually out of the old edition. We found it supporting the floor in the old edition. So Alex pulled it out mm -hmm. gently and we saved it. So now we're just going to throw it in here to pick up some of this weight. Oh, yeah. I like that sound. You guys good if I hit it? Yep. We're raising the roof with some good old-fashioned manpower. Just as Ed finishes up, Tommy arrives like a breath of fresh air. But instead of appreciating our hard work on the barn, what Tommy has to say just flat out stinks. It smells like decades of all kinds of different animal I think I know the root of the problem. Oh boy. Hi, buddy. Hi, Things I'm going to be researching tonight after work, relocation of a possum and a raccoon without hurting them or welcoming them back. Got any tips? We're in the home stretch of our off-the-grid vacation rental in the small town of Creamore. And that means my budget is also stretched to the max. But I've still got to finish the house exterior and the turn-of-the-century barn. My goal from minute one with this barn was to see how we could fix it up by spending almost nothing. This barn has been an animal flop house for over 100 years. We've shuttered the joint for good, safely relocating the last inhabitants. And now that we've cleared the air, we can lay the floor. I want the second floor of the barn to be a hideaway, a getaway, and a playhouse for kids and adults alike. The original floors were in major disrepair, so we're screwing down new plywood sheets over top. For less than a thousand bucks, this is a cost-effective solution, and it seals up the cracks, ensuring dust-free dining below. On the main floor, my plan to transform this space into an indoor dining area starts with removing and cleaning the original floorboards so we can reuse them. And my only investment in this will be some sweat equity. We're putting our pressure washer to the test in an attempt to revive these old, dirty boards. Whoa! This is the only kind of pressure that's fun to handle. So some of that oil is not going to come out, I don't think. I think what we need now is we need an approval. OK, so the girls Woo. have been busy. It looks like they're coming a lot cleaner. Can we get it clean all the way to the bottom? I'm not sure we're going to be able to get them 100% clean. It's like, do you think that people are going to like want to go in the barn if it's smelling like oil tar and there's like black stuff all over the boards? Mommy's goal is to make it so you do want to spend time in there. She's Mommy just to wants it to way. work. <laughs> Today's one of those days that I feel like I set a goal and maybe it was a bit ambitious. I think nobody but me is into this project. No one actually. I sort of am. I'm not really feeling it. I don't know whether you maybe just want to just go for some rough-cut pine and call it a day. Or go for some lunch. Tommy's grumbling. You're hungry? You're hungry? You're hangry. So shall we talk? You're hangry, very hangry. I've got an idea. Why don't we think about this over lunch? <laughs> yeah. Sure enough, when we get back at it, Ed has a surprise for me and my floorboard dilemma. There's quite a few boards uh, left over from the siding from the addition. So I do have quite a stack of the one by 12 pine. So, so I had my kids try to wash oil and grease off old boards. And meanwhile, we had the wood. Oh yeah. my gosh, I'm going down in the Mean Mom Chronicles. It turns out we have enough surplus lumber to replace the oil-stained boards with leftover siding. That means a new floor without spending a dime. And that has me jumping for joy. Meanwhile, the new front entrance is coming together. While they're busy building, out front, we're bricking up the extra original front door and making it into a window. To maintain the original aesthetic, we're reusing the brick that we removed from the back of the house to fill in this doorway. Our brick layer is working hard to match the original pattern perfectly. We're recycling and restoring. And now, it's time for Tommy and me to rethink the plan for the original Victorian porch. We are trying to reorient traffic here, away from that door and over to the side door, which is now the front door. What if you took the railing that's on the side and actually just continued it right across the front of this porch? So no steps, just lattice around the base. You could landscape around this so that there's no walkway up to it. 
thereby rendering that porch nothing other than a breakfast moment balcony, right? And it wouldn't take anything away from the historic nature of the exterior of the house. You know what it means when I say absolutely nothing? It means you're considering it. Closing off this porch with a railing solves the issue of the awkward second entrance in one simple move. That's a bold idea. <laughs> you love a bold idea. I need to chew on that. I need Can to I go home that. now? Because as we know, I'm good for one good idea per day. No, you got, you got a long day ahead of you. I've, I've already done, done my you. one good idea. With that, I head home to spend time with my family and do some indoor shopping for outdoor furniture. Can I see? Sure you can see. Come have a sit. You can do a search. Here's what's really cool. We go to the home, type in what you think we're looking for. Outdoor chairs. This is, this is what I love about this, is we can filter this. We know that we want them black and metal. I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay. Black metal patio. See, patio. these are nice. These are a set Whoa, of two. We like, like these. Those. These yeah. are pretty cool looking. One last thing we can do is if you hit filter again, Yep, and then you scroll down and you can see it has delivery options. So you can click the button that says in stock. Great, and then it'll only tell us what's available in the color we want, in the material we want, that is ready to ship to us immediately. Instant gratification is the best. My husband Alex and I invested in a small town home that we're transforming into a luxury rental property. This is blowing my mind. Toot toot. We're so close to the end. Today, our bargain bin floors are going down. The best part about this flooring is that it was free. Why was it free? Because we had to order all the siding we needed to cover the addition. And then they had to go through and they sorted out all the boards that had too many knots. So these are the reject boards. These are the boards that Ed deemed not good enough to go on the side of the house. But that rustic look will be perfect as the barn floor. Using leftover materials keeps our cost down and reduces our waste. Upstairs, the plywood floor is getting a facelift. Plywood is cheap and easy to install. We're giving it a durable paint finish to ensure that there'll be no pesky splinters. This is so much brighter. Wow. And you know what's also cool? What? There's multiple ways to get up here, right? You can take the elevator. <laughs> or, okay. or the escalator. While we wait for the floors to dry, Alex gives Tommy a lesson in operating heavy machinery. So how do you stop it? If I want this property ready for a summer party, I need to start thinking about furniture. Remember these? What about these things, Sarah? What are they? They're vintage saddle horses. This needs some paint. But let's just see if it works. This was a tall door. With my saddle horses on site, Ed and I test out the old door that I salvaged as a tabletop. It may be free, but that's all it's got going for it. It's just not wide enough. No one wants to smash their leg into the side of the saddle horse. That's not really going to work. We're going to need a bigger top. I don't want to abandon these saddle horses. They're a real rustic statement and the jumping off point for my red accent color. So I'm going to scrap the idea of that old free door and have a tabletop made. Fortunately, these leftover siding boards are the gifts that just keep on giving. I don't think it'll take Chris more than an hour to make me a table, and it's a little bit of time to paint it. And paint is the key to creating curb appeal. The front porch will be the first thing my guests see, so I want to make sure it's perfect. This isn't the first, the second, the third, the fourth, or even the fifth color we sampled on the exterior. Look at this blue, gorgeous color. And I'm hoping that this is the final one. This colonial inky blue is a custom blend. It's a traditionally inspired color that I'm using to give this house a fresh contemporary look. Here's a fun fact. 25 years ago today, I was probably doing exactly this, which helped me pay my university tuition. I used to paint houses during summer holidays. Back in the day, this was how I made money. Now, this is how I save it. This property wouldn't be complete without a spacious back deck to lounge on. So today, the team is busy building a simple platform. Building a deck doesn't have to break the bank. 
We're using pressure treated lumber and designed this to make sure there aren't any wasted pieces, which is smart if you've got your eye on the bottom line. Once the footings are level, the deck comes together fast. Fastest deck building I think I've ever seen. We only need one last detail, steps. Can we go all the way side to side? Well, do we want to go side to side, or do we just want to come to the edge of the door here so we could potentially have a nice planter? I kind of like the idea of just being able to be parking on this step and having a beer. And going, you want uh, full step? Yeah, I think so. I like the idea of the steps coming out to here. OK, full width, two one. full width. But can we take the next one in a little bit? Yeah. I find it always looks kind of ugly from the side if, if they're just lined up. Fine. If you want to be enjoying a beer, we got to get building these stairs. OK, let's go. The beauty of a small town is that you get to know your neighbors. This bike is so cute. You can take it for a ride if you want. Can I? Yeah. OK, I'm taking the Miami Sun for a spin. Awesome. I'll be back. Uh, here, let me give you a hand. Mud. Sweet. You guys have been working. Whoa. No. Uh, that's it's how you deliver thing. beer. Roll it in here right? Now. That was yeah, literally, like, literally the last literally screw. We just finished Good that timing. Thing, yeah. That is the last screw and the last step. And you've earned a chilly one of these. This is the deck christening. Cool. Nice. Oh, nice. Nicely done on the deck, gang. Cheers. Cheers. I didn't think you could do this deck that fast, but I tell you, I've been proven otherwise. My small town rental home is nearly complete. This house can sleep eight people, so to give renters more space and make it stand out in the listings, we're sprucing up the barn to create a spectacular three-season clubhouse and dining space. We're also tackling the exterior, and I've challenged myself to find the smartest ways to stretch my budget. We got a mostly free floor in the barn by reusing the pine planks left over from the siding install. Now the floors are laid, so I'm giving them some Sarah style. I like the idea of just sort of giving it a bit of character. Have I mentioned how much I love Sanders? Focusing the sanding on the edges and areas with knots gives these boards a more rustic look. That will help them match the weathered look of the rest of the barn. Can you just hold all my calls? I'll, I'll be here for the rest of the day. Some people find meditation soothing. For me, nothing beats the payoff of quality time spent with a sander. It's what I like to call restoration therapy. After sanding, we applied water-based urethane to protect the floors, and they look amazing. Oh, this is a transformed triumph. I would do this in a cottage. Like, look at this floor. This is a great rustic floor. This little extra touch of sanding the boards to just reveal a bit of character is what now makes it look so special. I the fact that this floor was free. That's tremendous value. Today, instead of interior design, we are doing exterior design. We're at the nursery today to select all of our plant material for our landscaping plan. When it comes to landscaping a rental, a low maintenance plan is best. I really like a monochromatic, simple, structured approach, partly because I'm a really busy person. I don't have all the time in the world to spend gardening and weeding and playing with the plants, so I want to put them in the garden. I want to watch them grow and thrive. I want them to look amazing, and I want them to need as little of my attention as possible. I brought my mom along and Tommy. My mom has always been an incredible gardener. She has fantastic plant knowledge, so I wouldn't ever consider doing this without her. Tommy's just here for the ride. We're trying to balance and counterbalance a historic home mm -hmm. with a contemporary flavor. Mm -hmm. So what's the best choice for that? Well, the lavender right now is stunning. Behind you as well is the Russian sage. This has more presence, you know, in right. terms of the height of the, and the intensity of the purple. And more dramatic okay. than the lavender. You always think a drama situation is better. So I like that's really good. Okay. I'm with you, Tom. We're going to go for drama. Yes. I chose hardy perennial flowers and plants. They'll look great in the photos for my rental listing, and they return year after year. So every season, my guests will arrive to a house that's just as the pictures promised. These just in front of us are the phantom hydrangeas. I think that's probably what you're looking for. Okay, hydrangeas. Okay, what's next? Lilacs? Um, yes. 
Let's look at lilacs. We think we need something showy in front of the bay window. Lilacs are a wonderful choice. Tag her. Let's take okay. her home. So old. Now it's time to get these babies in the ground. Planning and planting ourselves is saving us some serious green. Ed and his guys are prepping the whole backyard for sod. And my mom and I are going to plant the garden today with some help from Alex. Are we going to be able to get all this in today, do you think, Mom? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Definitely. First up, lilacs. When it comes to location, you want to get it right. Should we put them just off the corners here? So like here and there. Not everybody has access to a backhoe and a guy to run it, but many nurseries offer helpful services like delivery and custom landscaping. Horsepower, manpower. They say many hands make light work. It's true, but only if you pay attention to what you're doing. Hey, you just do that right in my boot. Yeah, yeah, make it up. Eventually, these three lilacs planted in front of the bay window will provide loads of privacy for our guests. And they come with a lovely scent in the spring. To stay true to the Victorian heritage of this home, I'm using flowers that would have grown in this area during the time period. Hasta, hasta, hasta. I think we're all about to get a refreshing shower. And right on cue, Mother Nature gives the garden a good soak. Do a great job, darling. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> a little rain's not stopping Alex. But sometimes you have to know when to ask for a rain check. Months ago, this was a shack packed with junk. But we cleared it out, cleaned it up, opened up the spaces, added new floors, and created a whole new entertainment space. And I'm sprucing up a couple of the original storm windows with the milk paint I bought. The dirty work is done, and it's time for the finishing touches. This looks good. We transformed this heritage barn from a shabby storage space into a chic outdoor playground that's truly one of a kind. This barn is original to this property, and I've always said that it was the gift with purchase. We have to remember this was a functioning barn, and livestock used to live in here. It smells pretty now. You and I are always tuned in to this idea of mood and experience, and yes. I think to have a destination that works, it has to have a unique flavor. Yeah, it has to have a mood that you can't experience in the house. The whole feel of this for me is the clubhouse. We found the saddle horses, and then they've set the tone for everything else. Yeah, the red. When you choose a bold color like red, I think the fear is that it's gonna get too themey. Yeah. But you know what? It is a barn, so why not celebrate it? Let it be themey. It also feels festive. Yeah. And this is an entertaining space. I love the fact that we have the serving counter. If you're gonna actually entertain out here, mm -hmm. you need to bring some stuff out. Like this is where you want your friends to come over, a family reunion. Party on. I love this floor. I think this would make a great cottage floor. It's incredible. You can vacuum it, you can mop it, you can sweep it. Plus, for the whole off-the-grid approach, this is about not wasting any material. Reuse, recycled, or upcycled. The cost, if you wanted to do this, would be $300 Come on. for this flooring. One of the best features of the barn is probably one of the worst features from the house. <laughs> the disaster window that was so bad in the principal bedroom. Suddenly, being able to look out and the air coming through and the light coming in, that's when it's like, Oh my gosh, I want to be up here. Yeah. The charcoal gray tones in the outdoor rug and furniture complement the painted floors and the barn board walls. Outdoor furniture is durable and comfortable. Add a few throw pillows and that practical choice looks as pretty as an indoor living room. It doesn't just look good, it feels good. You have this sense of outdoor life. We are in a barn that has a harvest table and a breeze flowing through it. This is usable, livable, practical space. Sitting in here, it makes me feel exactly as I wanted to. I feel relaxed, I feel happy, feel ready for a glass of wine. I feel like I want to come back. Right? 
This is such a different experience than anything we have anywhere else in the house. Absolutely. Our vacation rental property is all but done, and it's time to celebrate. Before we call this complete, let's take a step back to where it all began. We chose to invest in this small town because we knew it had loads of amenities year-round that would appeal to renters. We got the house for a steal, and that low purchase price gave us a bigger budget to invest in upgrades. A basic box addition doesn't have to break the bank, and it's an excellent way to get more space without having to move. If you're renovating an older home, this is the simplest way to make a dramatic change on a budget. With the help of my A-team, I managed to save a lot on labor. Our easy addition afforded us enough space to create a serene principal bedroom and ensuite at the back of the house. We also managed to sneak in a bonus bunk room that sleeps too and doubles as an office. In the original structure, we gave the two bedrooms a facelift and gave the family bathroom a complete gut job makeover to make a great guest space. On the main floor, we opened up the Victorian floor plan. Let's wreck some stuff. The girls helped take down the walls. Whoa! And now we have an exquisite kitchen and dining room. In the kitchen, we invested $2,000 for the room's defining feature, a marble backsplash. But we saved a bundle on the standard size big box store cabinetry. In the addition, we built a mudroom and a powder room for the convenience of our guests and a beautiful living room for apres ski lounging. We splurged on our patio doors, but the payoff of the view and outdoor access is well worth it. The basement wasn't on the original plans, but I couldn't imagine the house without it now. For a room without windows, it's one of the brightest ideas we had. The stunning glass railing in our basement was a $10,000 splurge, but it allowed us to bring light into the room and block out sound and the piece de resistance of great savings, our vinyl floor, which only took an hour to install. Along the way, we invested in the essential systems, adding a new high-efficiency furnace for about 25,000, a new water heater for 1,500, and new electrical, which ran us $30,000. All new HVAC, all new plumbing, all new electrical, new roof, new windows, new insulation. It needed it. It needed everything. This yes. is everything. A metal roof is a premium material and By its very nature. significantly more expensive than an asphalt shingle roof. Yes. However, metal roofs offer a greater return on investment. They reduce your energy use while increasing the value of your home. Driving past this house, you would likely never notice that there are eight solar panels on the roof. We have four days of backup power in the event of an Zombie outage. apocalypse. Right. This is thinking down the road. It's also about actually feeling good about the planet and about feeling good about your community. You can create that off-grid independence while still being tied to, to the town. community. Capital investments like these can be added to your mortgage while you reap instant rewards with free energy, reduced utility bills, the knowledge you're greening your home, and the security that if the power goes out, you won't be in the dark. I don't think I was ever extravagant. I was Not trying once. to recycle materials that we found on site. I was trying to use salvage materials, vintage materials, affordable materials. This wasn't a cheap and cheerful makeover. I worked hard to find a clever design scheme that would appeal to everyone. And wherever possible, I dressed up average in-stock parts, transforming the ordinary into the extraordinary. We also saved big on some DIY projects throughout the house. By using spare pieces and surplus wood, we were able to create architectural details for a lot less than store-bought. This is one of Sarah's best projects ever. May not be her biggest, but I'd say it's her best. It's time for Tommy and me to do a final survey of our work. We had some challenges, but look at what we've ended up with. Since we've reached the finish line, we can look at the old house, we can look at the addition, we can look at the barn, and we can see this picture all together. Now I feel like they each have their own personality, but they do relate to each other. We have the historical reference in the brick. That is the stately element. For sure. And I like the grounding element of the dark color palette. Our graphite window trims, door trims, and roof color, downspouts, eaves, everything else, fascia, I think all of that was just a, like, home run. Yeah, it's like we took something that was frilly Victorian traditional mm -hmm. 
and we did something a bit more punk. Like, yeah. we gave it just a little bit more of an edge. You know what I think one of the biggest game changers on the exterior is? What? Your idea of decommissioning that front door and making it just a balcony instead of an entryway. I was trying to understand and work out in my own head how to funnel people to the correct entrance. But it also opened up the opportunity to really let the landscape shine. The spacious covered side porch means guests can drive right up and unload their car directly into the house. As an added bonus, it's large enough that guests can sit out and have a coffee, rain or shine. We have the freshness and the contemporary twist of the addition. In terms of the siding, I mean, it doesn't get any cheaper than rough sawn barn paneling. This is a dollar a linear foot yeah. for 12 inches wide. And then we splurged on our big garden our door. incredible moment off the living right? room with a wonderful dream of indoor-outdoor living in the country. Without those doors, you don't have that. In just one day, we built a simple platform deck where guests can take in the view of the barn and backyard landscaping. With a super simple design, we created some major outdoor appeal. Based on the local market and the number of guests we can sleep, I estimate I can get $2,500 a week for this vacation rental. To get people excited about it, I'm going to drum up some word of mouth and host an open house. We want everything to look as good as it possibly can. We want to make the best first impression, okay? Okay. The open house is starting in five minutes. So now we open the doors and we let everybody come in and see what they think. Oh, wow. This is a lovely I love the colors. Oh. The entryways have those pretty stepping stone into the house, and it's just so pretty. Oh. Wow. This is amazing. Look at even the little nooks and crannies. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. That's so cool. Look at this lighting. Yeah. Oh, my God. For something that's so open concept, it is warm and cozy and inviting. The paper, it's texture. It's gorgeous. Wow, it's just <laughs> spectacular, but that's really amazing. I would never think of anything like this. I mean, that's why she's a beautiful, she's a decorator and I'm not. <laughs> I love the idea of the marble being on the walls. Brilliant. I love the fact that she's left the original trim. It's very contemporary, but it still holds that old world feel. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. Yes, I like it. I love this. Yes. Beautiful. You get the colors. I personally think we did right by the old house. We celebrated and uplifted and reinvigorated everything we could. So pretty. So, so pretty. And now we've created something new. I think the old house would be happy. That one looks amazing. They look awesome. Check this out. Uh oh. Okay. I mean, what do you think? It sounds like you might want to do something else. Wouldn't this be kind of a fun project for all of us to do? Of course it would be. What do you, what do you think? What do you think of this? That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so not for what it looks like right now, but do you think this has, what do you think? Do you think this has potential? Yeah. yeah. You're good on demo. You're good on cleanup. Daddy's good outside, I'm good inside. Aren't we just like the ultimate team?